Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is our Focus Rate Solo Gen 3, and over here we have the replacement, the Focus Rate Solo Gen 4. And it looks like our logo is going through a bit of a goth phase. On the front, we have two knobs for gain adjustment, buttons for phantom power, air instrument, direct monitoring, monitor adjustment, and new on the Gen 4, headphone volume control. Now that's neat. You also get a quarter inch line input and a quarter inch jack for your headphones, but you don't get that XLR jack on the front like we got with the Solo Gen 3. That's been moved around to the back, where we find our two line outputs, USB 2.0 Type-C and the Kensington security slot. So let's go ahead and plug this guy in and see if it knows how to Linux. Oh no, driver installation on Linux, the whore, hide the children. I am just kidding. Plug it in, you're done. Welcome to Linux. Out of the box, it works with Pulse Audio, Pipewire, and the final boss of Linux Audio, Jack. And that's cool, but I want to use Focusrite Control too. So I'm just going to click download, go over to Solo, and welcome to Linux. If you're new, this is normal. Here's a complete list of audio interface manufacturers with official Linux support. But everybody loves a feel-good story. And the Solo Gen 4, it has one. On September 2023, Joffrey, not that one, started work on Alsa Scarlet GUI. It's a mixer setup utility for the Focusrite Scarlet Gen 4 interfaces. This was followed by a GoFundMe campaign. And October 12th, there was a very exciting update. Focusrite made the final pledge to the campaign, offered to send over new hardware, and help out with the development process. And here it is, the Alsa Scarlet 2 control panel. It allows you to reset the device, control routing, mix sources, and monitor levels. But if you plan on using it, make sure you have kernel 6.7 or higher. And if you're running an older kernel, all you have to do is install the backported modules. Another neat thing about the Gen 4 is there's a utility to update the firmware from Linux. This is a first for a Focusrite device. Now I suggest taking a not broke, don't fix approach to firmware updates, but at least the option's there. Now we need to take a look at the round trip latency. This measures the time it takes for the audio to go in, get processed, and come out. The lower the better, and it's really important if you're trying to monitor post-FX. The lowest the Gen 4 manages is 5.66 milliseconds at 96k with a 128 buffer, and just under 9 milliseconds at 48k 128, putting it slightly ahead of the Focusrite Solo Gen 3. Something you never want in your recording is clicks and pops, and that's exactly what I'm going to be testing here on Linux. We call these X runs, and they're the result of improperly configured systems, bad drivers, or properly configured systems being pushed beyond their limits. I have both inputs and outputs connected to Reaper. I'm going to be recording for 10 minutes in the session that I use for live streaming, and look at that zero, which is the only acceptable amount of X runs. It's time for a quick sound check. We have the SE2000 for condenser option and the Golden Age D2 for the we have an SM7B at home dynamic option. Check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. We are trying to get uh, somewhere averaging roughly around 24 dB, kind of peaking at 18, and I'm desperately trying not to pop any peas. I do not have a pop filter. I'm right in front of this condenser mic, but it's doing what it needs to do. We have a couple of modes that we can play around with, though, because the air mode has two different settings on this presence and presence plus overdrive let's go ahead and switch air mode to presence now i have more presence according to focus right it does sound different i don't know if it's more in your face a little bit more raspy a little tinny i'm not really up to snuff on my audio file terminology so let's go from regular presence and see what presence plus overdrive sounds like which that over to presence Ooh, oh funky that does sound uh, different i think it sounds better than just regular presence more legible i should say i don't know if it sounds better it's definitely air mode with just a little more oomph check one two check one two you know the drill we're trying to get up to 24. gotta keep going gotta keep going how far do we need to go i want to get a regular speaking voice and uh yeah that is about 75, a little over 75%, but this Golden Age D2 is a very good stand-in. It's a good analog for the Shure SM7B. It requires roughly the same amount of gain, same type of microphone, a lot cheaper, 
And uh, yeah, I didn't want to spend $300 on a kick drum microphone and try to use it for podcasting. Let's go ahead and roll through our different settings with air mode, which is currently off, but I'm going to go ahead and switch that over to presence mode. And hey, it definitely sounds different. I don't know if it's really bringing the presence, but of course we have presence plus overdrive, which is different sound setting number two, EQ curves. You got to love them. And I don't, I don't really like the way this sounds with the dynamic microphone. I think it sounded a lot better or a lot more legible with the condenser mic, but Hey, there it is. And of course, let's just go ahead and set that back to just a flat response on the focus, right? Solo gen four with the golden age project D2 dynamic microphone. The reason I sound like this and not like that is thanks to my VO microphone, the middle switch, this guy, it does a violent 12 db cut between 100 and 1000 hertz you can simulate the effect at home with any parametric eq when it comes to headphones the output impedance clocks in around 50 ohms that's more than enough to drive my mp1s at 60 ohms and the classic mdr 7506s at 63 ohms now i don't know how well it will drive 150 250 300 ohm chonkers but you can always slap on a preamp and pretend the added noise is tone or whatever audio files do. So what do we think of our little red block of rainbow blinkiness? For those of you who already own one and you're just here looking for a little confirmation bias, it's fine. It's okay. If you need a low cost interface, it's going to get the job done. But if you haven't bought one yet, you might want to consider saving a few bucks and picking up the Gen 3 model. That's because there's not much Gen 4-iness in the Solo Gen 4. It uses an old preamp design, limiting it to 53 dB of gain compared to 69 dB of gain in literally every other Gen 4 interface. It also lacks the clip safe and auto gain features. Boo. And you know what? That's not by accident. It's a classic sales technique. You see this base model with all of its limitations, then you notice the next model up is overflowing with Gen 4 thiness and your brain tells you, hey man, it's only $60 more, so I might as well go ahead and get that one. But on the positive side, it does have this beautiful goth logo, a dedicated headphone volume control, along with a slick setup and routing utility. At the end of the day, could you record an album on it using Linux? The answer to that is yes. And that's the only thing that matters. So uh, yeah, be sure to check out interfacinglinux.com for the full write-up linked in the video description. And hey, if you're feeling particularly generous, Hammer on those like and subscribe buttons so that glue stick munching YouTube algorithm realizes audio production on Linux is a thing. But most importantly, get out there and make something awesome.